someone have asked a very beautiful question is marriage dependent on fate or free will this is a very very beautiful question because i also advocate match making and it's not about advocation it's about the reality not only i advocate about match match making but our great sages also talk about match making so with inclusion of things such as remedies match making etc do we have free will is a question that comes up to our mind now you can see many people who will say that despite match make despite bad match making marriage is good or despite good match making marriage is bad i will tell you one thing that first of all these people who make such conclusions know nothing of astrology sad part is that they consult those astrologers who are also astrological fools and they take decisions based on the advice of such astrologers who are astrologically illiterate because of which problems happen in their life and then they start blaming complete of astrology so first thing first if you think guna milan guna matching moon nakshatra matching is match making then you are highly mistaken in that also if you think 32 point match making is everything then also you are extremely wrong there is 32 point match making 55 point match making and 88 point match right so first of all don't jump to conclusions without knowing the reality another point is that guna milan or match making as per the nakshatras of moon is very basic those sages have mentioned it but in my practical experience i have not seen it working at all right there are more important principles of match making which is told by our sages itself but not directly indirectly because it is told indirectly people are not aware of these things and because of this particular reason there are great mistakes in match making which then forces innocent people to believe that astrology does not work or match making is bogus but it is not a problem of match making but the knowledge of the astrologer who is doing the match keeping this particular thing in mind though i taught an extensive course on match making long ago i think 2019 20 or 18 now i am going to again teach in depth about match making in a course and the course will be launched shortly it will be three or four day course right where i will be teaching match making in depth the principles that i have found working based on which i have done match making of people since more than 12 years now using which when i did not approved for a match and people still married they had bad results and when i gave a green signal to the matching and people married they are still living happily thousands of clients whose horoscopes i have matched and who have taken advice from me in the matters of marriage are a living testimony to it so if you want to learn about matchmaking in depth you can consider joining this course which will be launched either with the video or very shortly keep an eye for that now coming to the concept of marriage one thing let me make you very very clear that if i am telling you something is this way that way or anything as such i am telling it to you only after experience almost all of my words are classically supported or supported by research i don't talk of any result or anything without proper experience and proper support so if i am telling you that this combination gives this result you have to keep it in mind that good results or bad results anything can be there depending on how the planet is placed in because planet and house planet and rashi aspect only one factor does not decide the complete result you have to see the complete horoscope but still after that if i am attaching one result to a particular factor say planet and houses i am doing it because i have seen it working in my experience of more than a decade now and let me tell you 60% of my clients are repeat clients right so i give them predictions predictions come true they come for consultation again for this particular reason i am generally booked for weeks despite the fact that i do one to two consultations per day right so it is all dependent on you you want to listen to some 
X, Y, Z person or you want to listen to me, it is all dependent on you. But still, if you do not agree with my views, you are free to not watch my channel. There is no one who is forcing you to watch it, right? Coming to the topic of matchmaking, coming to the topic of marriage is related to free will or it is predestined. The answer of these things lies in astrology itself. See, what I have noticed that people are not very well aware of their own reality. Unemployed children who have achieved nothing in life, neither have very bright plans in future because day in and day out they are only thinking of marriage. Right and not thinking of their career, not thinking of settling themselves. If they have wishes and desires to marry some movie star, film star, then God knows in which world of delusion they are living. So first of all, before you have any expectations of dream boy, dream girl, stand in front of the mirror, see your reality, and have your expectations accordingly. Is the point number is point number one that I want to tell you. Second thing is see, in this life, normally speaking, the life is governed by karmas and you reap the fruits of your karmas. The result of this karma that you have done and that you are going to reap, it is decided by the God, but it is decided under an eternal rule. And because God have no attachment to anyone, Based on the standard rule, punishment or result, whatever is there, is to be faced by the native. So, in this particular scenario, should we worship God or should we not worship God? Should we perform remedies or should we not perform remedies is a question. Now, if you worship God, if you believe in God, it is your benefit. It is no benefit of God. He is not dying for your worship or anything as such. Right. So, you see, talking of karma, it is told that when one is going through good times, because good times come as a result of good karma and bad times come as a result of bad karma. And it's not like that you will enjoy good karmas only, then you will enjoy bad karmas. It's not like that. Because of good karma or bad karma, you have the initial phase of your life. Now, based on if you continue to do good karma in your good period, then this good period generally elongates, remains good period or even if bad period comes in, it is for shorter time and soon good period comes. But in this good period, if you continue to do bad karma, then for whatever long the good result is indicated, that long it will be enjoyed and then bad karma will start manifesting. And as you have done bad karma in good time, this bad period will be very long lasting and will be more painful. So whether doing bad karmas will elongate the time of bad karmas or will elongate the pain related to bad karma cannot be told with certainty without looking at an astrological horoscope. So one should do good karma in good times and one should do good karma in bad times also. This is told because it is best in the benefit of the native. But what is the definite result that is only dependent on the horoscope only? Now suppose I am telling you one thing. If someone wants to marry daughter of a big businessman, suppose. Let's take an example. If someone wants to marry the daughter of Bill Gates or anything as such, can they do that? Absolutely not. So I will give you a very simple straightforward answer that you have limited options. To choose between the limited options, you have the free. But the options are limited. That is the simple answer. Now, why we are learning astrology, this purpose also we have to understand. Now, basic point is when you are going through good times, you have three options. You just enjoy the good time, do nothing. In this particular scenario, good time will go, bad time will come. In the good time, you continue to do good karmas, then generally good time will elongate, bad time will come, but it will not give you much suffering. That bad time will be over quickly also and good time will come again. 
in good time you start doing bad karma in that particular scenario the good time will still go but the good results will diminish bad time will come it will be painful also and it will be elongated as well right so you are free to do the karma in the same manner when it comes to marriage choices are there and it is basically multiple choices are there so you can choose any of them now that also depends on the horoscope and i will come to the horoscopic conditions in a while and to make this proper choice things such as matchmaking is there and after that particular choice whatever happens to you that is all dependent on you right now coming to this particular option of choice you i will explain it to you but before that let's understand the purpose of astrology is the purpose of astrology prediction if the purpose of astrology is prediction only see traditionally it is believed that 5 lakh shlokas are there in astrology predictive natal astrology based on how to predict using birth chart alone there are 5000 shlokas now why 5000 shlokas are needed you will see there are many principles to predict marriage analyze marriage there are many principles to tell you probable dashas etc for marriage our sages are very great they can simply write one technique one dasha principle which will give definitely marriage sure shot 100% but they did not do that they have written 5000 shlokas why because prediction is not the basic purpose planning is the basic purpose so a basic prediction is there that prediction you have to keep in mind but once again it is like bad karmas you can choose whether the period of the bad karma will be short or long you can choose how much suffering etc will be there right so to make the choice accordingly to plan things accordingly astrology is there so that you can know beforehand what is going to happen and can take a decision accordingly and this is the basic point now coming to horoscope one thing you have to understand four or five setups are there now there will be planets see for marriage you will analyze the seventh house seventh lord venus now one thing is very clear as i always say house is emotion house lord is person and significator is the mental concept significator is the society significator is the hand of god so when i say house is emotion what is happening in your marriage is dependent on seventh house now what is your life partner who is your life partner description of the life partner nature behavior character of the life partner family etc of the life partner is the seventh lord and venus the significator is first of all girlfriend boyfriend so there is difference between girlfriend boyfriend and life partner secondarily what is your concept of a life partner does that get fulfilled or not based on the society you belong to what is the concept of life partner as per that society and will your life partner meet that demand or not should all be analyzed with respect to the significator venus so first of all this differentiation you have to make very very clear in your mind now after this the second thing is benefic malefic planet naturally benefic naturally malefic and functional benefic functional malefic that is called lord of different house you know it this way better now regarding natural benefic and natural malefic understand that a planet is malefic because of a particular reason a planet is benefic because of a particular reason for example because jupiter gives fortune happiness enjoyment and intelligence and these are good qualities jupiter is a beneficial planet because saturn gives miseries health problems sadness you know being indifferent and these are bad qualities saturn is a bad planet so now whenever a planet good or bad is connected to the seventh house because that is what is marriage right when it is connected to seventh house it indicates what is going to happen in marriage now say if mars is connected to the seventh house then mars indicates argument anger fights being too rational being too practical being too disciplined aggressive etc now these are certainly bad qualities but not all of them are bad qualities see as i told you mars indicates discipline so if both the partners have mars connected to their seventh house both will have discipline and two people having discipline is good also 
so one combination is not entirely good or is not entirely bad problem can happen that if the life partner is having mars connected to seventh house and that mars is more powerful than your mars then life partner is more disciplined than you and then it can create problem so here you understand the reason of the problem and accordingly suitable changes you can make and in this particular scenario even a bad marriage can convert into good marriage so first of all we have to understand what the planets are trying to indicate and how we can tackle that through behavioral changes making changes in yourself or by positively influencing the positively activating the significations of the planet this understanding takes maximum of problems away for example what i mean by so by understanding and making suitable changes i told you that mars is rational mars is logical and when mars is connected to your seventh house if the life partner is not rational if the life partner is not logical the relationship is not going to work well so while choosing the life partner you can check how much rational and logical they are because if they are not it is going to create problem in long run but the problem with humans is when they are in love they tend to ignore everything and when they grow out of love everything seems to be a problem so this is first of all a, a something that you can choose in the starting but what i have seen that in horoscope when there are bad combinations surrounding the seventh house then either because of the desperation of native or high sexuality or because of delay in marriage circumstances happens as such that when the time of marriage comes it is so quick so fast and the person is so desperate to marry that even the most intelligent person loses their intelligence and discrimination and without thinking much without analyzing things properly they go on and marry multiple bad hints negative indications are there but people tend to ignore all of it and just go with the person any person that they find or in passion if they are in love relationship in passion they ignore everything and marry and ultimately it becomes problematic so let's understand one point if there are good combinations with respect to seventh house automatically one will choose a suitable life partner while choosing the life partner the judgment etc the judgment discrimination of the native will not be wrong and when benefic planets are connected to the seventh house person will naturally get attracted to those people who have good matching with their horoscope and in this particular scenario whether the native does match making or not their marital life is good at least satisfied when malefics combination are concerning with respect to seventh house one have to take utmost care be very discriminative because generally in these conditions because of desperation high sexuality or because the marriage is already much delayed person keeps his intelligence and discriminations aside and marries very quickly and because bad combinations are surrounding the seventh house i have seen such people get attracted towards those people only whose horoscopes does not match properly to these people and then they marry and then it becomes very disastrous so this thing i have seen but despite that it have happened first of all we should understand that okay my life partner is having mars connected to seventh house and they will like discipline rationality and practicality and i should make changes in myself if i want to save my marriage this will be first step and secondarily the native itself if you are having mars connected to your seventh house you should understand that you are more disciplinarian you are more rational you are more logical but your life partner may not be at the same level and it is marriage not an employee employer relationship where everyone have to be on the common pedestal so you can be a little bit loose a little bit relaxed also provided the fact that both of the couple understand it by understanding each other's horoscope it will be an ideal setup and marital life can be said marital life will be satisfactory this is the prime purpose of astrology prime purpose of astrology is not to predict marriage will be good or bad but is to make people understand how to make their marriage good i always say this to my clients 
that predicting your marriage will be good predicting your divorce will happen or not is not my purpose saving your divorce making sure that your marriage remains happy is my prime purpose is my prime motive then i become a winner good prediction accurate prediction that i do every day this is not my target right so this is point number 1 that you have to understand secondary thing what i have seen you know for example you say if a planet mars is connected to seventh house the influence of mars is there in seventh house now see this mars will not disappear certainly this mars will be there the result of mars will be there now what else does mars indicate you have to think mars indicates younger spouse so when mars is connected to the seventh house and you get married to someone younger the signification of mars are already used in giving you a younger spouse in this scenario the bad result of mars influencing the seventh house generally either does not come to pass or when it comes to pass the result is not very hard you know the result is not very difficult so the native is saved right so this is the compensating the result of the planet by activation of another signification of the planet is what i recommend in the same scenario if saturn is connected to the 7th house saturn indicates an elder life partner so marrying an elder life partner will be better when rahu is connected to the 7th house then it indicates a life partner who have already suffered in the matters of marriage right broken marriage failed relationship etc these things are indicated and when you marry such life partner your marital life is good when sun is connected to the 7th house in that particular scenario life partner coming from a different background possibly an inferior or a humble background as compared to yours is a better life partner as compared to life partner coming from same background generally when these things are followed so this is also free will section right that if you activate a major result related to that planet by your free will then because the planet have already given the result in deciding the type of the life partner in deciding the background etc of the life partner generally the bad effect of that malefic planet is not there if the bad results are there they can be easily taken care of so this is a free will part but once again see what happens no when you are now these things need great sacrifice by pure devotion you can achieve anything but achieving pure devotion is not very easy so some sacrifice one have to make if one tells that i belong from a rich family why i will marry a poor life partner if you have this particular approach then be ready for the result then there is no one to save you right you believe in my word you don't believe in my word i don't care about it whatever is the truth whatever is the reality that will happen you don't follow my word you will repent tomorrow this will be your problem it is none of my business right so this is something that you have to very clearly understand okay yeah. this is point number 1 now so this compensation is something that i have seen is you know works very greatly generally and one more thing i told you ki when there are bad combinations surrounding the seventh house there is desperation for marriage and also no one more thing is there if there are malefics in kendras then what what is the first result for many malefics in kendras one does not believe in astrology one becomes a non believer when there are malefic influences on fifth house malefic influences on fifth house one strongly believes in astrology such people learn astrology also malefic influences in kendra people are non believer in astrology why because see i must have talked about in a previous video any planet in kendra influences the ascendant ascendant decides the complete life of the native now because malefics are influencing the kendras the life is supposed to be miserable now if you believe in astrology if you follow astrological advice how your life will be miserable so first thing that happens is people do not believe in astrology in the same manner if any house is having malefic influences regarding the matter of that house either one does not believe in astrology like people do not believe in matchmaking etc or they don't get proper guidance because if they get proper guidance how can bad result happen 
So this thing is very common. Generally, people who have bad combinations related to their seventh house, they are very desperate for marriage. You will see that they are very sexual. Right? Because these make the premise or the background for the mistake to happen, which is going to happen in future. Right? So this thing too will be there. Right? There is no two thoughts about it. Additionally, what I have seen that when bad combinations are present, like right now, because we are talking about marriage. So when bad combinations are present with respect to seventh house, then these people in their young age, they will not think about settling themselves, finding a better job, making the next plan for 10 years. They will not think about how I can ease the sufferings of my family members, how I can uplift myself to higher status, how I can make my life stable. These things they don't think. What they think about what type of life partner I will have, uh, where I will meet my life partner, will I get a beautiful life partner or not? These are the things that they keep on thinking and they don't pay focus to important things. I am not telling you that thinking about life partner is bad. Absolutely not. But you should know your preferences. Right? If you are not well settled in life, if you are not at a good place, then even if you get the best of the life partner, because you are not settled, first of all, the best life partner will not marry you. If you are not settled, first of all, the person is not a fool. Secondarily, even if they marry you, but if you are not settled in life, if you are not well to do in life, then marriage will not sustain. That is also very clear. Right. So you will generally see that people who are having bad combinations related to 7,000 flock here and there. Right. They are, they are so desperate that they, you know, try to spark a relationship or spark a conversation with women or men in the comment section or, of video or different social media channels and all of these things, because these are the premise of the problem that is going to happen, right? These are the ways in which the problem will happen. So if you are having these combinations, you have to keep these things under control. Otherwise, remember, graha means someone who catches, someone who controls. And when a planet comes into play, the first thing they do, they control your mind. And when planets come to play, even the most intelligent people also do the silliest of the mistakes. So people who are non-intelligent, what to talk about them, they to do anything in life that they themselves also cannot imagine. All right. So leave this particular. I have, I'm telling you things into fragments, right? One point after another, and that you can easily understand, right? As I always say, astrology is an intellectual science. I have never said that astrology is a divine science for that matter. I have always said that astrology is an intellectual science. Astrology is a predictive science or anything as such, right? So astrology being an intellectual science, I am talking from my intelligence. You have to understand with your intelligence, right? This is what I believe in. Someone may think that Astrology is not an intellectual science, but I believe that it is an intellectual science. So if you don't believe astrology is an intellectual science, you should have no place in my channel. You should not watch my channel, right? Let me be very clear about, about for whom I make the content and for whom I am not making it, right? This is something that have to be very, very clear. <clears throat> now coming back to the setup once again. Now differentiating between natural malefics and different house lots, the thing with the difference of different house lords is once again, it's the basic one. When the sixth lord, eighth lord or twelfth lord is influencing the seventh house, is it hell broke loose? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Not. Now see houses also have significations. So if the sixth lord is connected to seventh house, what is the signification of sixth house fights, enmity, etc. So there can be fights and enmity with life partner, right? This is not complete bad result. Like, like life partner is not dying. Only fights and enmity is there. Now in this particular scenario, you see if two people like each other, love each other, support each other, you, you think why fights happen? Fights happen because Thought of two people are not matching. Now here you can do matchmaking and match the horoscope with someone who have a compatible line of thought. And this way thought will match and fights will not happen. 
So what will happen to the sixth lot influencing the seventh house? Will it stop giving a result? No, it will still give the result. But because their mentality is same, their line of thinking is same, the fight will be very limited. Right now, the fight can only happen because of misunderstanding. Five minutes into the fight, they will understand that they both want to say the same thing. Just one is not able to convey and other is not able to understand. So in five minutes, the fight will be over. Right? This is primary point. Secondarily, the fight will be because of other conditions. For example, the fight is because mother, father, neighbor or someone in the office said something, the fight will be because of that. They will fight for 5-10 minutes, then they will understand, let leave it here. And then they will understand that let's leave this person and focus on our lives. So the fight will be temporary. So what have happened with matchmaking? If the 6th Lord is connected to 7th house, because 6th house indicates fights and enmity, now enmity will be there only when two people don't understand each other, love etc. is not there, proper matchmaking, enmity can be taken care of. Now with respect to fight, if proper matchmaking is not there because the nature of the people, preferences of the people, choices, likes, dislikes of the people do not match, their fight will be long lasting. The fight will always continue. The fight will never resolve. And over the time, the fight will keep on increasing and eventually one day it will break, it will explode. With proper matchmaking, what will happen? The mentality of the people will remain same. Now the reason of fight will be either the third be, third person which can be easily ignored as you, you know, spend more time with your life partner, you understand the life partner and outer circumstances does not matter much. For any, for any person with good intelligence, they will not give much importance to outer circumstances, what X person is saying, what X person is doing. Intelligent, successful, busy people have no time for it. Right? Because their mentality is same, another reason for fight can be misunderstanding of each other's words one is not able to convey another is not able to understand which can also be easily resolved as i have given you an example this is the play of proper matchmaking right it will not completely eradicate the fight but whether fights always keep on going it is never resolved and it creates issues that thing or the fight is temporary for some time only and later on the couple reconcile this is the effect so one thing you have to understand, a malefic planet, Mars, Saturn, Rahu, Sun is influencing the 7th house or 6th, 8th, 12th house Lord is influencing the 7th house. This is the worst combination. Hell broke loose. Your life is extremely bad. Nothing can happen for you. It's not the reality. This I have told in multiple of my videos. Houses have significations. Planets have significations. And whatever are their significations, bad results may happen related to those significations. But these are not the all bad results of the world indicated by a single planet or a single house. This is not the reality. Other than that, when proper matchmaking is done in that particular scenario, things can be greatly diminished. And with this greatly diminished, the condition never become explosive as I have given you example for the 6th house in the same manner 8th house and 12th house you can also very easily understand if you know basics of astrology if you don't know basics of astrology then go to my channel start from the oldest video and watch all the videos you will easily understand right so this is a particular point that you have to understand that it cannot be completely eradicated but it can be greatly controlled with a proper match but then once again, for proper matchmaking to happen, first of all, some good influences should be there on the 7th house because as I told you, when only bad influences are there because of desperation, not believing in astrology, X, Y, Z, problems happen. And in this particular scenario, proper matchmaking cannot take place, which will still create the issue, right? One good astrologer who knows astrology, you will not consult him. You will consult another cheap astrologer or another astrologer who is uh, telling lies over internet day in and day out. And you will go on and believe them. You will not believe the real person. Right? Because combinations are there in your horoscope, it is destined to happen. No one can change it. Right? So, of course, as I told you in the starting, you don't have complete free will. It is like you have two hours free in a day. 
in that two hours you can do four activity cooking reading walking playing you have two hours free is limited it is not more than two hours not less than two hours the activity that you can do in these two hours are also four activities only you cannot do anything activity more than this and you cannot sit without doing any activity at all also so these are the things hours are two activities are four now one activity you do for four hour two activities sorry one activity you do for one hour one activity you do for the two hours or one activity you do for one hour or one activity you do for another one hour or all the four activities you do for half an hour half an hour half an hour half an hour is all dependent on you right this is how it happens so combination is there combination will not disappear but you can greatly you can greatly do things to take care of it to a very great extent so you see this is very basic in astrology i don't know why it is not being taught to people nowadays when i was children when i was a child it was taught greatly that if the dasha is indicating accident that accident will happen for sure but as an accident one can fall from a bus going at the speed of 80 kilometers per hour one can fall from a bus going at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour or one can fall from bicycle so accident will happen that is certain you will fall that is certain the speed of bus will be 80 kilometers per hour 10 kilometers per hour or the vehicle will be a cycle and then you will fall on the road you will fall on the grass you will fall on sand these things you can control and you cannot control it always you can control it at few places only right so this is the level of free will that you have this is the level of free will that you can exercise not more than this right so this is something that you have to understand now two three more points are there see if a uh, now another thing is planet is powerful or planet is weak so generally what happens you see planets are connected to the house and you see all the planets will give result which is not the reality many planets are unable to give results also right so if the planet is going into planetary war if or if the planet is being combusted generally these planets do not give result while deciding result the result of these planets can be taken out in this particular scenario combust planet or planet going into planetary war if they also happen to achieve good conditions such as retrogression exaltation etc then also their result is not lost so their result is there so first of all you have to understand that the result of the weak planets may or may not happen and when seventh house is influenced by weak malefic in that particular scenario with proper matchmaking the result of the weak malefic can be you know avoided as well whereas if the powerful planets are influencing the seventh house the result of those powerful planets cannot be the results of those powerful planets cannot be eradicated at all so if a powerful malefic is connected with the seventh house you cannot you cannot disappear that result you cannot take care of that result under any situation that will happen for sure so this is another point whenever you are analyzing a house or a horoscope you should understand that all planets are not equally powerful some planets are unable to give result and the result for those planets can should not be told and specifically these are those results which can be eradicated by a proper matchmaking right this is point number 1 that you have to understand also out of multiple planets the most powerful one decides the for example you say mars and saturn both are influencing the seventh house now whether there will be fights and misery because of fight or there will be misery and one will fight because of that so say misery is financial problem so whether misery or financial problem will be there and one will fight because of that or there will be fight and in that fight there will be verbal abuse etc because of which misery will come what is the main result if the mars is powerful then fight is the main result saturn is weaker misery follows fight 
If Saturn is more powerful, then misery is the prime result and fight is because of misery. So when multiple planets are influencing, you have to keep this in mind that the prime result is decided by the most powerful planet and the result is subsequently modified by the second most powerful, third most powerful planet and accordingly the result should be decided. And as I told you, the result of the most powerful planet, you cannot eradicate. So this is something that will come. But once again, the point I will call back the compromise of signification or the substitution of signification point. Now say a strong Mars is influencing the seventh house. Now if you choose to marry a younger life partner which is indicated by Mars or someone marries, Mars also indicates handicap. And not being able to produce a child is also handicap. So Mars is connected to the seventh house and one gets married to a life partner who have no combinations for childbirth or who is younger. You have activated the result of Mars in the form of having a younger life partner or in the form of having a life partner who cannot biologically produce a child. By choosing to marry with such a life partner by your free will, you have activated the result of Mars. And here, because Mars decides the nature of the life partner, the quality of the life partner itself, the result of Mars have happened in a most powerful way. And now, the other results of Mars will not be that strong. So even if Mars is going to give fight because it is influencing the seventh house, these fights will not be that ugly, which will otherwise be if you don't marry a younger life partner or otherwise. Right, this is point number one. Point number two, if one does a very great matchmaking, very good matchmaking, which, you know, which makes sure that there are no fights in marriage at all. In that particular scenario, provided the fact that the mass is powerful, if mass is weak, then the result may not happen. Right. Now, provided the fact that Mars is powerful, one have not married a younger life partner, one have not married a life partner who is, uh, you know, who is not having combination for having children. And the matching is also good in this particular scenario because a strong result of Mars is there. And one have matched the horoscope in such a way that there should be no fights, then what will happen? Mars will still work. And now Mars will work in other ways. So other significations of Mars accidents because of life partner accidents while being with life partners, accidents while traveling because 7,000 tickets traveling also. Or fire accidents while one is living with life partner or fire accidents while one is traveling with life partner, all of these things, other significations of Mars will activate. Right, so the result of planet does not disappear altogether, but you can have free will to choose where the result will happen. And once you make the choice, the forthcoming part is already decided. So it's like you have a free will to choose between three balls. Three balls are kept there. You have a free will to choose between the three balls. And once you have picked up any of the ball, what is the next step and what will be the outcome of the game is already decided. This is the level of free will that we enjoy. Right, this is point number two. Not point number two. This is one of the multiple points that I have kept in front of you. Right, which I have found true according to my experience. This what I am telling you is my understanding of karma plus my experience of looking at horoscopes, my experience of predictions and my experience of watching the lives of those people whom I have given consultations and whatever have happened to their lives. Right. So this knowledge is not theoretical, but is purely based on experience. This experience is testified now for more than a decade. Right. And I don't think you are learning astrology for more than a decade. So better to be in your pants. That will be more better. However, come back to the topic. Right. So this thing is there. The planet cannot be completely substituted. And last but not the least point, because multiple points are there, right? 
and to cover all of the point in a singular video, first of all, is not possible and neither it is my purpose, right? Neither it is my purpose to complete all the points in one particular video. In my videos, my point is that I will give you some hints based on those hints using your mind, because according to me, astrology is an intellectual science. Using your mind, you will understand what I am trying to say. What are the further implications? You will take the knowledge forward and you will understand things for yourself. This is my prime purpose. While doing so, I also expect that people will watch all of the content of my channel and will try to understand my way of thinking, my way of looking at horoscopes and will keep in mind all the things that I have talked about earlier and only after that will watch my videos, right? So this much hard work you will have to do. That I am like many people are, you know, many people are like, you know, some astrologer have said this, some astrologer have said that. There are many such people. Many people have said many things. But you know, you will see there are people who know 10 principles of this astrologer, 10 principles of that astrologer, 10 principles of some other astrologer. Still, they cannot practice astrology well. Why? Because they don't follow one person properly. You have to understand everyone have their own style of horoscope analysis. Everyone have their own style of horoscope judgment. Some will give more emphasis to Rashi. Some will give more emphasis to houses. Some will give more emphasis to Bhavas. Some will have another approach. Some will have another approach. So this particular khichdi, one principle of this person, another principle of that principle, another principle of that person is not going to work. Right. If you follow a person, you completely follow that person. Be accustomed with all the knowledge, all the teachings of that particular person. And don't think that one will teach you everything open heartedly. Even those people who are doing things for free will not give complete thing out. Right. This is impossible to take your mind out and keep it in a tray and serve it to people is nearly impossible. So follow one person wholeheartedly. Read and consume all the content, read everything that those people are making, whomever you want to follow. And by their teachings, take a peep in their mind and how they are thinking. Right. And based on that, develop your own thinking, then you will succeed. Otherwise not. So almost to the last point for today is once again boils down to Rashi and Namaj. So you see fixed Rashi Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo fixed Rashi means fixity. If the 7th house, 7th Lord Venus three factors are there in Rashi and Namaj total of five places, right? Seventh house is one of Rashi only. Seventh house of Namamsh, I don't consider. There are no houses and divisional charts. I am telling this to you. Either you believe into it, right? Or if you want to argue why, sir, I am not available to give an answer. I have already discussed about it in many of my previous videos that you can watch. So seventh house, seventh Lord in Rashi Namams, Venus in Rashi Namams. Five factors are there. And Four fixed Rashis are there, right? Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. These five factors go at all the five places. They are into fixed Rashis. Fixed Rashis indicate everything is fixed, no movement. In this particular scenario, whatever combination is there with respect to the seventh house that cannot be changed, matchmaking, etc., will not work. Will not work does not mean that matchmaking principles do not work. It just means that. Either you will not find the horoscope with perfect matchmaking and the time will time will be getting late. So one in desperation gets married or they get their horoscopes married from some, you know, with from some incompetent astrologers, etc. because of which bad matchmaking happens and the results remain as it is. Or the life partner may give you wrong birth details, etc. etc. Multiple reasons can be there to think of the reason and how things will manifest. Is the to think of the reason you can sit throughout the day and can think multiple reasons how the thing will happen only God knows. I always say as an astrologer, our purpose is to point out what will happen, how this will happen only God's decide. Right? Astrologer is called equal to 
you know, second to God, but is not God. That equal to God in foreseeing the future only, but is not God at all. Right? So fixed Rashi indicates fixity. That means whatever result is supposed to happen, that will happen for sure. That does not mean dual Rashis or movable Rashis. Any of them indicate free will. No, they don't indicate. But fixed Rashis indicate that things are fixed. Now five factors are there. And if all the five factors are in fixed Rashi, then nothing will happen. If three factors are in fixed Rashi, then there is only 20% of free will. Whatever is the result of the planet, that will happen for sure. Now that result happens in higher quantity or lower quantity that you can decide by higher quantity or lower quantity. What I mean, recall the sixth house example once again. That if the sixth lord is connected to the seventh house, higher frequency, higher frequency result will be that the mentality, likes, dislikes, etc. of the couple is not matching. They fight. The fight continues for days. The fight is not resolved. New fight comes up. That also continues for days. And many such fights pile up over multiple years and ultimately it explodes. It is high intensity result. Low intensity result is you do a proper matchmaking. The likes, dislikes, etc. of the couple is the same, but somehow one is not able to convey things properly. Another is not able to understand things properly because of which misunderstandings happen because of which fights may happen which will be easily resolved within a few hours only and they will live happily. So three factors are in fixed rashes. Then the result cannot be completely eradicated. It can be taken, you know, it can be made more or less. That is your free will. And out of these five factors, no factor in movable Rashi or only one factor in movable, uh, sorry, no factor in fixed Rashi or only one factor in fixed Rashi means you have the free will of compensation of significations. So in this particular scenario, say only one factor out of these five factors or no factor is in fixed Rashi in that particular scenario, say Mars is connected to seventh house. So one can compensate about one can compensate for the significations of Mars by marrying with a younger life partner or by marrying with a life partner who do not have very good combinations for childbirth. And this way, because the result of Mars have already happened in giving the type of life partner, other bad result of Mars will not happen. At other places, one can proportionately decide, you know, what is a proportion, right? So for other placements, Whatever I have not mentioned, one can proportionately decide. I think I have been very clear in telling the results. And once again, in my previous videos, I have discussed about different conditions of planets and analysis of different factors, etc. That can all that should also be included in. And a proper judgment should be made after considering all the factors and after deciding the powerful, weak, effective, and ineffective principles. The complete analysis should be made. I think my answer is very, very clear. The principles of matchmaking are not well known to people. This is the particular reason people think that matchmaking is not working. Right. Proper matchmaking. Many matchmaking principles are there, which is told by our sages, but it is not told clearly. It is told in a very hidden cryptic manner. So people don't know about it. This is the biggest reason of problem. Of course, you have free will. Right. The time is limited. The choice is limited. Once you make the choice, the future consequences are also limited. So in this limited choice, you have a free will to make a choice. That I have explained in this video. This is my short, small, sweet answer. Right. And this answer includes almost everything that I have to say on this topic. Thank you for watching. I hope it have added something to your knowledge.